Hello fans and friends across the universe. Welcome to my YouTube channel From Me To You. My name's Keir Smith and it was 20 years ago today that George Harrison passed away. And I wanted to mark the occasion by talking about 10 things that I thought were really cool about George and mark some of his great achievements, just to remind us all how great he really was. Either side of his incredible music career, George left school at 16 and he worked for several months as an apprentice electrician and in his later years many will know that he was a keen gardener and the grounds of his Friar Park home were filled with lush flowers, plants and streams. Although George is often referred to as the Quiet Beetle, co-member of the Travelling Mulberries and good friend Tom Petty said, he never shut up, he was the best hang. George embraced Indian culture in the mid-60s and helped to broaden the horizons of the Beatles and indeed the world of popular music by incorporating Indian instrumentation into his and the Beatles songs. George wrote 22 songs that appear across the Beatles albums, EPs and singles and they really cover a wide variety of sounds and styles. From Don't Bother Me to Taxman, Within You Without You, Blue Jay Way, while My Guitar Gently Weeps, Savoy Truffle, Something, Here Comes the Sun, I Me Mine. It's an incredible upward trajectory that he went through with his songwriting. And it's incredible to think that when the news broke that the Beatles had split up, George had not long turned 27 years old. George was the first Beatle to top the singles and album charts simultaneously with My Sweet Lord and All Things Must Pass. And with the All Things Must Pass album, he was the first artist to release a triple album of all new material. And possibly George's crowning achievement, the concert for Bangladesh, was a pair of benefit concerts played on the 1st of August 1971 at Madison Square Garden, New York. The first show at 2.30pm and the second show at 8pm. Organised by George and his friend Ravi Shankar to raise awareness and fund relief for the people of Bangladesh at a time when the country was ravaged by famine, floods and civil war, leaving as many as 10 million people fleeing their homes. George called up a host of friends and musicians who agreed to help by playing at the live shows, including Leon Russell, Billy Preston, Eric Clapton, Ringo Starr and Bob Dylan. A single, Bangladesh, was released in July 1971 prior to the live shows and then the triple live album was released in December 1971. All of the proceeds from the live shows, the single and the album were given to UNICEF to aid Bangladeshi refugees and sales from the LPs, CDs and DVDs continue to fund them to this day. It was a resounding success and a truly heartfelt, ambitious and humanitarian effort by George and it was a precursor for events like Live Aid. Bob Geldof himself said that when he was organising Live Aid that the concert for Bangladesh was a big source of inspiration for him. And on the 1st of August 1978 George's wife Olivia gave birth to George's one and only child that was Donnie and there are many photos where Donnie looks the spitting image of his father a keen musician too, be sure to check out his work with The New Number Two and his solo album In Parallel. I'm sure you'll be pleasantly surprised. Also in 1978, just as Monty Python's Life of Brian film was about to be made, Lord Belfont, chairman of EMI, read the screenplay that his company had bought and he didn't like it and he pulled the plug on the whole thing. Needing big money and fast, Python's Eric Idle rang George up to see if he could help and George said, yeah, OK, I'll do it. And he rang his business manager, Dennis O'Brien, and together they set up Handmade Films. And the sole purpose of Handmade Films was just to see through the production of Life of Brian. But George wanted to see the film so much that he ended up mortgaging his Friar Park home and coughing up around about £3 million of his own money to fund the project. Described by Monty Python's Terry Jones as the world's most expensive cinema ticket, thankfully the Life of Brian film went on to be a global hit, and it's definitely one of England's most popular films of all time, 
and George even makes a small cameo appearance in the film as Mr Papadopoulos. Many will know that George was a Formula One and car racing enthusiast and one of his last public appearances was at the Canadian Grand Prix in 2001. And George's superb Formula One inspired single from 1979, Faster, raised funds for a cancer research fund set up by Swedish driver Gunnar Nilsson. George created his own supergroup with the Travelling Wilburys along with Tom Petty, Jeff Lynne, Roy Orbison and Bob Dylan and they released their first album in October 1988 to widespread acclaim and sadly Roy Orbison died in December of the same year. The band did go on to release a second album in October 1990, mischievously titled Volume 3 and according to Jeff Lynne that was George's idea, he said let's confuse the buggers, I love the Travelling Wolverine stuff, both albums are definitely worth your listening time. So George Harrison, taken from us far too soon, 20 years ago today and I marked the occasion by listening to some of his albums. I started off with Somewhere in England and then moved on to 33 and a third and then I fancied a little bit of Wilburys so I went for volume three and I thoroughly enjoyed listening to them all over again. 20 years gone, unbelievable but George was with me today especially when Dear One came on through my headphones and I heard his voice singing, you hear my spirit sing to you, you feel my feelings calling you. And of course, George's music will live on forever. And I think that one of the most enduring things about it, certainly for me, is it speaks to the heart. And for anyone who's watching and enjoying this video, please leave your thoughts and feelings about George in the comments section below. Let me know what you like most about George, what your favourite songs are, I'm always interested to read what other fans have to say and I think we should celebrate George together. Thanks as always for watching. See you next time.